baby bullshit wars, you won't actually run out of ammo and also fuel and also your vehicles will get damaged and they'll need repairs. Um, so for that you need supply trucks or supply helicopters or supply whatever the hell that thing is. Um, anyway, but yes, that's, that's another thing important. When you're looking at supply units, big importance is how much supplies they hold in this bit. I'm mousing over something that just says 2400L. That basically is how many supplies each unit brings in. So this thing brings in quite a bloody lot actually for what it is. But you only get six of them and they can move quite quickly. But um, yes, basically you'll need these to draw them in. They will draw supplies from these forward, wherever it is. Oh, of course, it's an FOB. I can't ever actually have a picture up of it, but just imagine an army base. Um, and you have to put these on at the start of the game. You can't just bring these in, like, halfway through um, the battle. It's basically a pre-constructed FOB, um, which will have supplies and ammunition, and only a limited amount. They hold about 1,600 of whatever those supply things are. Um, so a, a bloody hell of a lot. Um, so, yeah, that's actually one of the first things I'm going to put. I'm going to put two in because it's actually a good idea to have multiple of them because, as you can imagine, one FOB will run out at one stage, and they usually do. Um, supplies. Now I've got two slots to find you enough supplies to continue your game with. Now, we're going to do a, quite a modern war, and for that reason... Oh, See, there's two ways, the thing is, is the two things with supplies, and this is probably a bad idea why I'm doing it in person, but yeah, the thing is, is that you've got the two risks with air, air, aircraft and trucks. Supply trucks, they're obviously vulnerable to ground attack, um, but you'll actually find that in a situation where things are quite hairy, they're probably actually a bit better off getting in there, but of course, if you have a force which is totally cut off from supplies, getting these to them is basically going to be impossible. Um, so, same with supply trucks. You also don't get many of these. However, the helicopters, and there's two variants, this one, well yeah, Super Stallion, um, and then there's also the Super Chinook, but um, the good thing about helicopters is, is they can bring it, you can bring in the supplies you need by air. So that's a very important thing to have. Um, just looking at it, I think I'll probably do Super Stallion for you. I'll get six of them. Um, it's important you don't want to lose many of these, um, so you need to be careful. That's the one big uh, that's the one big disadvantage of these. And of course, don't bring these super close to the front line because, well, um, it's very easy for them to be shot down by enemy missiles. So don't just leave them on the front to get blown up by a tank. So that's one thing. Infantry, next thing. Now, there are three, well, f I'll go over the four variants, the four main variants, actually five, because they've got, well, let's do engineers. Engineers are for killing infantry and only infantry, usually. They come equipped with lots of flamethrowery sort of things. Um, yes. Oh, yeah, by the way, all infantry, all foot soldiers always come in on a vehicle, because the maps are freaking big. Um... So that's a that's just just a little thing you've got to take into consideration. It's not so much the infantry unit. In fact, that will have both in the battle group. They, they, you can see roughly both of them. But also, it's the vehicle they come in for, and of course, they both contribute to the cost. So as you can see, top right corner, infantry. These ones are quite cheap. They're only fifteen. Well, that's a bit expensive actually. But anyway, um, and the vehicle only costs five. Next M113 only costs fives. Now if I upgraded it to a Huey, that's a lot faster and a lot more efficient. So, um, and that's a big t thing to take into account. Also fuel, because everything in the world uses fuel. And if I go onto this, it's fast, but it will guzzle through petrol quite nastily. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, anyway, but the, um, so yeah, that's that's something you want to take into account. Also, whether your vehicle defends itself. Lots of things to go into. Um, Black Hawk becomes more expensive, then there's a Twin Huey. 
I don't know. Well, anyway. But yeah, engineers. Then you've got special forces. So this is some Delta Force units. Um, and they are generally these all-killing badasses. But they tend to be small units, and sometimes they can have special things like sniper rifles and other things. These guys are just sort of... You don't get many of them, but they are devastating in combat. Mind you, frankly, I'd just go for some Marines if you're the Americans. Also, here's the next thing. AA units. So there are two men in the, these sections, and you're probably thinking, why? Well, they basically just carry a stinger missile. So when a jet fighter comes along, something big and nasty carrying napalm bombs, they can take it out. I prefer to use anti-air vehicles, not infantry. But you can use infantry, and I do recommend just having a few, because the great thing about them is, is that they can hide in places that vehicles won't. That's the big advantage of of infantry versus vehicles, and they're cheaper. So it would only cost 20 points to bring on a team of these guys, as opposed to probably about 50 or 60 for a reasonable AA vehicle in this time. Um, and there's loads of them. Um, there's loads of variants, which is why I usually do this bit, because this isn't something you're going to need to know too much now, but I mean there are little variants as to accuracy, the sort of punch these things pack, um, and what you want to be bringing in. Um, so, you know, I'd probably be better to tell you what is the difference between, say, an LAAD Red Eye and a Stinger. Um, yeah, they're kind of just, hang on a minute, I'm not even checking. And there's also, oh no, that's the next one. Okay, yeah, infantry. So this is some light infantry. I'll get up, there we go, just regular US riflemen. Um, these are your sort of dual and achievable sort of soldiers. Uh, again, infantry, these guys will usually turn out on top. They're sort of good for fighting foot soldiers. They don't specialise like engineers. Engineers are very good in, you know, just building situations, hence the flamethrower, but you probably want to back them up with something. But also, these guys can take part in infantry operations, because, of course, they've got laws, and although their range is crap, it's only 500 metres, if a tank, you know, gets close to them in a town or a forest, they are going to annihilate that tank and let this they can't penetrate through the armour, which is highly unlikely. Um, so yeah, infantry are very good for that. Um, and it means you can dot them around and create a front line and then, you know, you can get them in to back things up. And of course there's loads of things like that. Um, then there's anti-tank infantry, just like the, the, um, the, the AA units except the sections are a bit bigger and they, they focus more on taking out ones. This is a bad example because it's actually a small and it's kind of closer to something like a, a law rocket launcher. In fact, that's the only AT you can, guys can bring on. Um, but yes, now here, I'm just looking at the units. Now I've actually been given time to slow down. It would probably actually be best. You want to be pa packing reasonably up-to-date units because if you're bringing outdated units, the AT they might be packing will be considerably weaker. So, for example, the AP pound, that's how much armor they can really go through. Um, these ones will go for a reasonably modern tank. Um, whereas, say, uh, no, the small can do that. But if you go in for some riflemen that were made in 1975, they're only packing laws and, well, they were good for the day, but now they're going to start faltering against much better vehicles. Anyway, um, so for this, I'd actually probably, oh, actually, no, that's a point. How efficient are these vehicles? I'd probably recommend these LVTs. They are very thick skinned, um, so they're actually quite good. And this one is actually quite cheap. There's a reason for that though, the gun on it is a bit crap, but it's got thick skin. Um, actually it's not particularly good. No, but it is amphibious, that's the great thing. This is one other thing to take into account when you're looking at this. It's an amphibious vehicle, so um, you may not be, you know, constantly pulling off D-Days, but um, rivers, um, though you may have to, ha you, you may find like the enemies have packed up around a, a bridge and they're just, you know, you just can't get across. So, you know, amphibious units getting across that river, that's a very good idea. Um, make sure to bank them up for tanks. Anyway, um, I'd probably say them. Maybe it is a good idea. Ooh. 
See, this is the choice you've got. You either pick something like the Light Rifleman, which, I mean, the, the US Marines will cost about 30 points, these Light Riflemen will cost about 25, and their transport, well, is a bit weak, but then again, you get more of them. But no, I'd actually say the US Marines, they come in large sections, there's about 15 unit sections, so these are very good starting units, and they will kill everything in their path, because their training is quite good. Oh, those are the wrong ones. Oh, actually, no, they cost 35. Okay, that was a point. Now, so bring them on. They're quite expensive, though. I'm going to just fit you with just a shit ton of marines, because engineers are fancy and nice and kind of interesting, but it's better just to have infantry that can deal with everything rather than getting specialised ones for that one engagement out of a million. And besides, you always have access to artillery. Right. AA is, um... Let's just get you the most modern thing going. Yeah, that's accurate. It does decent amounts of damage. And it's got some range to it. Um, though the vehicle is going to be coming in this bit shit. Oh, okay, there we go. That's better. Um, it's better to go with just light vehicles because, uh, honestly, you just need to get them onto the field. You don't need, you don't need to be worrying about the vehicle too much. Um, sometimes, in fact, actually, that's a point. If you go onto the campaign, be careful of the vehicle they bring on because um, if you lose that vehicle, you lose the unit they were carrying as well. So that's a point to just consider. Um, now, I've just also put some AT units on. These, you might just get a scenario where you have actually. No, you don't need these. Um, the AT cap capability of the Marines is almost as good. And it's only you're only sacrificing a bit of range, so just get more AA units. We might choose to get rid of those later because you've only got limited space in a battle group. Okay, next thing, support. This is mainly this mainly just means artillery and anti-air. Um, I'll go over anti-air. There are two types of it. There is types that sling shit tons of lead in the air, with the hopes one of them will hit the aircraft. And then there is also. Oh, that's artillery. There is also getting a nice super precise missile to hit them, but um, they both have their advantages. The good advantage of, say, something like an M113 with a Vulcan on it is, um, while it may be a little bit on the inaccurate side, um, it's re their range tends to be reasonable, but also they basically just, oh my goodness, um, they will go on and on and on for days, whereas these anti-aircraft missiles, and that, that makes them amazing for helicopter attacks. If the enemy bring a lot of helicopters, these are the vehicles to go to, so I'm going to get you two of those. So now, just an FYI, so for your American infantry, you're currently, unless we change it, we probably will, 45 infantry units and 14 anti-aircraft teams. Um, so here I've put on a reasonable amount of about 26 anti-aircraft Vulcan things. I personally go for this. I used to go for missiles, but um, honestly, supplies can be a problem, so these are a good thing to have. Missiles, also a good thing to have, but just just remember they tend to be a bit less on the ammo. Like, I mean, for example, like an Avenger, it only packs eight missiles, and you've also got to take into account that some of those will miss, so you're looking at perhaps about, well, 70% accuracy. Assume that um, the jet fighters will have um, reasonable air defences on them. You're probably only looking at about two or three of those hitting, probably more like two. And that's the big thing. Um, you, these things will run out of ammo fast, so helicopters will quickly overwhelm a group of these. Um, but you obviously you never deploy something on its own, so you're not going to just see this one Avenger on its own. Obviously, you might just have two or three about, or four even. The unit maximum is four, and then you then if you want like eight, say you'd bring on two seconds of four. So that's just a little thing. Anyway, um, yeah. So there's lots of things. I would never recommend a Hawk because although the accurate, well, the accuracy was good for its time, but you don't get many at all. You only get three missiles, so that's a thing to take into account. There's lots of things to go in for. Um, 
that probably is quite mean, but it's only got four missiles. But yes, I'll put on... I'm just looking at all the things you can get. Sharapel. I wouldn't recommend those. The accuracy is only half. This is probably what I'd recommend, actually, the Avenger. Um, probably with the least amount of missiles, but it's accurate, so you're probably sure it's going to knock something out. But remember, supplies will be a problem, so just take that into account. Now, there are lots of things in the way of artillery. Um, yeah, the, obviously there's rocket artillery and there's regular artillery. It's not a good idea to just go for the biggest gun going, because this thing only carries two shots. And that ain't going to get you through a battle. Um, so it's better to just go with something small, light, that carries a lot of ammunition. Um, because you're going to need it to carry on for a while. And ammunition plays a big part. There's also, you also have something like this. Which, oh my goodness, it apparently packs two 600mm rockets. So I assume that thing will annihilate anything it touches. Yeah, with a HE power, or oh, an AP power. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Hellraiser's messaging me. I didn't know he did that, okay. Buddy joined your channel. Who's that that just joined? It's me. Oh, sorry, me. I'm I'm teaching Burnout how to play whore game, Red Dragon. Anyway, sorry, I didn't actually see that message. Anyway. You're playing it with Burnout? I am, yes. He's in the chat, by the way. I will just say yeah. that. He's muted. I know he's muted, but he's watching my stream. <laughs> yes. Um, but... Anyway, yeah, um, I'll burn out, just a thing, how Razor's on now, so, you know, sup. Anyway, I wonder if you can actually hear that. But, oh, well, um, anyway, going Chronic. back to it, AAU, uh, actually, uh, actually how Razor, your, do you your want game to is a uh, really game, lagging but... a lot? I mean, like, oh, the yeah. um, screen okay. thing is... Okay, I'm just going through the basic shit with oh. Burnout. Yeah. Um, let's mm. be no, 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 that's bit, because... because right. just I'm because getting, like, yeah, two Chronics. Um, oh, no, no, I'll give you some basic artillery. Um... Are you sure about that? Chronic. I think it's a little complicated uh, for him. Your thing is uh, really lagging a lot. Oh, I it mean, is? Like, the um, screen thing <laughs> is really lagging. Oh. Yeah. No, 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 that's because it's All right. just I'm getting like two Oh, no, no, it's actually Twitch. Oh. But yeah, Burnout, I'm making you um, tanks and shit. I suppose you can listen from here on outwards. You get the gist. I've taught you most of the stuff. But I'll quickly make you this deck, and then we can get on with it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get you tanks. Uh, this era, I'll Are get you. No, we'll do modern, because with the numbers, uh, don't worry, Burnout Hellraiser. We're not gonna be doing the evil that was Art Stodd's cut. We'll go against, you know, a nation. I need a 1990 deck or a 90 deck, whatever. Okay, well, I'm making a tank battle group for. Well, no, just a regular battle we group for. Have a great one. Yeah. That's a point. Do I have a logistic one? I think I must do by now. Okay. Um, yeah, tanks. I'm going to get you burn out. Okay, there's some... There you go, you can get eight of those. Tanks are very expensive by this point in history, um, but they tend to annihilate everything in their path, just of an FYI burn out. That's tanks done. Um, oh, actually, the frick is that? It looks like a leopard. Like a really screwed up leopard tank. Oh, it is a leopard tank. And a funny stabiliser. I feel like Burnout's probably going to be... Burnout, you're probably going to be taking a bunch of hits, so, you know, that's a... Uh, like, I'm probably not going to give you something like a leopard tank. Um, helicopters, right. Oh no, this is recon. Yeah, um, b burnout. Um, are you, can you hear me? Are you, you're probably watching the stream, aren't you? Probably. So, yeah, I can yeah. hear you. Okay, well, so, um, 
yeah, basically recon. Um, just like if you've ever played Ruse, there are units that hide in things like forests and towns. Recon are your best chance for finding them. Um, it's always best to have, as I'm going to put in your deck. Oh my god, this one comes with Hellfire missiles. Um, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Well, oh wait, are you you were watching the stream though, weren't you? So, yeah, I'm um, watching the stream. I'm watching. The okay. Stream. Sound muted. Okay, right. So, I think um, so on okay, well, never mind. Right, but anyway, yeah, I'm gonna put in some light recon. Um, this comes with a mini gun. So just an FYI, this thing ever gets attacked, it is armed um, with a death ray of a mini gun. But anyway, um, okay, okay, right. Well. Um, that's a thing. But anyway, um, yes, this is a helicopter. Um, it's, you know, it flies over the battlefield and it checks shit out. Um, it's good to have a few different recon units, but this is the first one I would say about. Recon helicopter. You, you fly, it, the guy has a pair of binoculars, he looks at stuff and he figures out if it's safe or not. Helicopters are the best thing though, because they're quick, you can fly them in front of a, a, an approaching army and you can be like, okay, they're good. Um, then it's also good to have some tanks, or I mean, I always have like fighting recon, because although you're probably not going to make up the battle line with these tanks, it's good to have something that's going to stay alive in a slugging match. Um, oh. Actually, there's some Bradleys in here. You could probably use those. Yeah, these would be pretty adequate. And these ones, well, these ones are quite expensive. Oh, and you don't get many of them in the battle group. In which case, let's go for the earlier version. Yeah, these will be good. Um, and then the final thing. I mean, there is also fighting recon. You could get something like a a longbow which actually comes with a shit ton of anti-tank guided missiles. I will just say that now. We haven't gone over anti-tank guided missiles but they are the new kings of tank battles. Um, they will go through almost anything um, and also beware. Just just beware. Like That's the thing about um, helicopters. They, the, Well just anti-tank guided stuff. They will go through basically anything, so you just have to be just on the lookout for them. Um, now the next thing is is obviously cavalry scouts here. Um, they're recon units. They're, they're I mean they're basic. It's like any other infantry except they can scout shit out, um, and they're also they also can hide. So you know, good idea to have recon scouts in your deck. Um, I'm going to get you. This is probably the best thing. It's going to cost 10 points more than the cheaper one, but they come in a lovely little armoured vehicle which can slug it out in a battle, um, just in case you get ambushed. And they also have, these guys actually have guided anti-tank, um, so that's also a thing to note. Their range is about three times as long as your other anti-tank units, so, you know. Scout infantry, yeah. they'll do their shit. Right. Vehicles. This is kind of the miscellaneous vehicles, but it usually comes down to tank destroyers usually, um, with a couple of weird, interesting things. Um, this is one. This is an LOV, but it's got an anti-tank missile on top. Um, Sixty percent accuracy, but the tank gun is longer ranged than most tanks, and the AP power is pretty scary as well. So this could easily go through an Abrams tank. This thing. So. Um, that's a thing to note. They are. I'm going to put some in so you can have a play with them, but I personally don't use them particularly much because I find missiles can seriously go through ammo. Um, um, yeah. You're, I'm going to be playing with a German armoured deck. You are? Okay. Horace is playing with a German armoured deck. You can see some of them in action. I'll probably bring some Brits. Um, also, in vehicles, you can also find there will be more Vulcans I mean, this is one thing about NATO, is there's usually more Vulcans mm -hmm. sitting in the vehicle's deck, so I'm going to put them in, because, well, there's more. There's a limit on how many units you can bring ah, on. The Germans don't have Vulcans, though. No, they don't, so, yeah, I'm going to put some in. Burnout, you're probably going to be doing quite a bit of AA stuff. Uh, me and Hellraiser will probably just hold the line for you, um, and then you can usually just sort of look at something and go, okay, attack, I'll just attack here. Um... 
you're just going to do your own thing for this game. Um, though you can defend if you want to. But anyway, um, yeah, um, that's a good thing. Also, more conventional... Oh, there's also more conventional vehicles, so LAVs. Um, some LAV... Well, some, some vehicles you'll find in this can actually carry an infantry, so you might find... I wouldn't test it out, but these probably could actually tow... In, these could, you could get infantry to go in them. So that's that's always something. In, the work. in um, some of the vehicle units. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah. But um so that's something. So if you lost a transport you could always get some in here. Um yes. I'm not but now, but you you can if you want. I mean you can also get stuff like this, which actually has reasonable armor for an APC. The armor on them is not gonna be good enough to survive an actual battle. Oh yeah, there's also flame front vehicles in here. Um those have the bows. But yes, but no, um, I'm not going to get too much in here because it's better to spend it in other areas and jets cost a lot. But um, there's lots of things you can do and there's less conventional vehicles, so these things, these V-150s, I think they frankly look a bit ugly, but you know, you oh, can yeah, get I'm some. I not much in the Air Force, but I wouldn't have a lot of leopards. Okay. Um, also, this is... Um, if you've been playing War Thunder recently, there's some of these now on the Japanese line. Um, it's basically a shit ton of recoilless guns strapped to the top of a vehicle. Um, yeah, the kind of modern bazookas. They do their stuff. These ones apparently don't have any AP power, but a lot of hate. Well, no HE, but they're good at suppressing stuff. Oh, no, that's the main gun. Never mind. Um, yeah, no, these things can sort of do stuff. I'm not going to put them in. They're kind of there's things that can do their job better. Um, but they're all, they're very cheap, they only cost 20, oh so God. less than an Bradley. infantry unit. Bradley's obese. Oh yeah, Hellraiser likes Bradley's. Um, fuck it. Uh, actually, there aren't any in the vehicle section. Oh well. Okay, helos. Um, right, helicopters. They're amazing at destroying stuff, not so great at taking ground. Also, never put the helicopter in first unless it's a recon helicopter and if you do be very careful because there's no guarantee that where you're going in front of you there is an, an infantry section hiding with a stinger missile and they will mess these things up. Huh? I don't think I've ever had a helicopter survive a battle. Yeah, as Hellraiser just said, he's never had a helicopter survive a battle with a stinger missile. Um, and uh, to be honest, I've only ever had it rarely. Um, but yes, there are lots of things. I'll probably... Where is an Apache? Here we go. This thing comes with how fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Apaches are terrifying. They're like flying main battle tanks, which come at you really quickly. Huh? Oh, no, yeah, you. Uh, I'm, I'm giving him six, so that's just as many as he can get. Oh, that actually would be quite interesting. I'll shove this in. I might end Disconnected. I disconnected from... Team speak apparently. Hang on, BLP. Uh, I'm still here, by the way. Hello. Oh, right, I've just outright disconnected. Um, my internet seems to be fine. I assume you can still hear me. I think. Why am I checking this? Is this something to be checking? Yeah, apparently you can still hear me. Okay, well, we're just going to carry on then. Um, yeah, so, I don't know. I think. TeamSpeak will do its own thing. It will reconnect in a bit, I don't know. Um, yeah, no, this is something I just saw that's interesting. A helicopter with Stinger missiles in. Hellraiser's just put a new one. Um, Channel switch. Sound yeah, he'll, he'll give us the new address in a moment. Um, Sound muted. Okay, all oh, right, that's what it was. You still... See the broadcast. Right, anyway, I hope you can still see the broadcast. That would be lovely if you could. Okay, you can. Okay, wonderful. Well, that just screwed everything up. 
there are, again, lots of things you can do in helicopters. They're very good for rushing into areas where the enemy's attacking and you haven't really got much of a response. Um, yes. Uh, actually, I'll put some Super Cobras in. There's actually a Super Cobra here, um, and it's got basically all three really good weapons you can get. You can get missiles which are unguided, and they're just a case if you just chuck at the enemy and go F off. Um, they're great for infantry, but useless at everything else, so I don't really incorporate them much. Um, okay, well, something. Anyway, um, but yes... Um, so the I'm going to put a cobra in your deck. Um, these have, this will actually oh I'll make sure it's a super cobra. Anyway, good thing about these super cobras is if you look at the armament, it's got anti-radar missiles. It only carries two of them, but they can knock out other aircraft. Oh no, actually, oh okay, no, um, these ones come with anti-radar. So I okay, never mind. Anti-radar is a bit of a funny one, really, but um, yes. Uh, you've also got these Apaches though. They come with missiles, they come with a main gun. If an enemy helicopter comes along, a 30mm will go through it and make nobody's business, so they're wonderful. Um, jet fighters, now these often, these cost the most. After you get the first one, they, they just, they cost a lot. Like, oh my goodness. So yeah, um, and also you get the least amount of them. Whenever you deploy a jet fighter out, deploy them in at least a multiple of two, um, so that they can cover each other, and they can do their own thing. Also, you'll find the AI will go; th they'll bring out a lot. So one jet fighter is going to get messed up. So yeah, this is an Eagle jet fighter. It's now your new best friend in the air department. You're going to have four of them. Um, they're good. They do their stuff. They they're basically these ones are dog fighting jets. As you can see, they come with a lot of missiles for fighting other aircraft. And they're also, if you look down the bottom there, their speed, their air detection, um, their countermeasures are very good. Like, they've got a lot of... just everything about them is pretty superb. That's why they are so much. Like, these, these will cost a lot. I'm also going to find you something which is sort of more jet fighter-y, but it's a bit cheaper, to be honest. Um, it's best to bring on, f it's best to bring on fighters first, and then worry about everything else later. Um, so yeah, I'll get you some f wild weasels, these seem pretty, oh what? Oh, it said you've got six of them, but now it's saying only two. Okay, never mind wild weasels, you can fuck off. Oh, right, um, that would be the Phantom 2. So these will probably be quite crap, but you can get a lot of them. Um, that's a thing, you know, you've, you've got six of them, and it only cost one card as opposed to these two eagles, which just get two of them on, you get, I mean, you get six times as many, so that's a thing. So you have these, you can fight them, oh no, hey, look, they're marine, they're by the US Marines, so, you know, you've got these now. Um, the other thing is ground attack, so jet fighters, which are good at smashing and mushing, enemy aircraft. There's loads of ways to go into this. There's um, unguided bombs, like these ones have napalm. Napalm is very nice, but it, you know, it's napalm. It's not going to do much against the tank, sadly. Um, there's also regular bombs, so this will make a big bang. Um, if you can directly hit something with one of those, it's probably going to destroy it, even if it's a large tank. And then there's also cluster bombs. Well, yeah, this is a cluster bomb. So this is 12, uh, 12, 100, 245 kilogram bombs. If these land on anything, and they will, they will destroy it. No questions asked. There are Zarks. There are, um, I think I'll probably get you some of those. Yes. Um, oh, now you probably, why don't you want me to have them on? Oh, oh, right, you're at your maximum points up at the top there. Okay, right, now this is the time where we compromise. Now I said the infantry will probably take a hit. And that's right, now I've got time for one more jet fighter. Oh, naval stuff, we'll come to that in a moment. That'll be a quick thing. Um, oh yeah, this is the other type of AA, oh well, aircraft things. Hold on. Our razor missed me again. 
Hold on, you son of a bitch. Okay, anyway, no, but, um, yeah. Um, basically, these ones have got Maverick missiles, and they're basically guided missiles. So they're the same thing as your anti-tank units will have, but they're flown from a jet fighter. These are probably the safer option to an extent. If you're sending these guys out, and I do warn you about this, keep an eye on them because um, you'll find this guided missile jets will target an, uh, an enemy vehicle and if that vehicle has disappeared any time since you gave the order they won't launch because they'll be going oh, what the fuck do we do now I've lost my target I mean it is reappearing but I mean he hasn't told me to attack it again so you know like that's a thing so yeah they 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 might just not launch their at their thing so keep an eye on their target keep an eye on them if their target disappears issue them a new one um and yeah um don't obviously go for anything that's too jittery because if it's disappearing all the time you may not even be able to lock on it when it gets close but if it's just sort of there and it's in the open i'd say go for it um but the good thing about guided missiles is is that they will just oh that's a phantom um Thing. But yeah, no, they, the good thing about guided missiles is is that they're great at knocking out tanks. These things will go through even like the heaviest Abrams tank, um, of which I haven't actually given you for a good reason. But yeah, um, that's a thing. So these things will launch their missiles, then they'll pull up and get the hell out of there. They should do, in theory. So um, you've got your Thunderbolts. There we go. Um and this is the thing, if you have another jet fighter like the Fighting Falcons? Yeah, it was the Fighting Fa oh no, it wasn't the Fighting Falcons, it was the Aardvarks I said. These will also do the job. I'll talk about these. In fact, these would be... I'm going to get rid of the Phantoms, actually. I've just looked at these, and these can also fight over jets, but they can also drop bombs, so... Um, they're actually a better option. Um, but yeah, the thing about cluster bombs is, is you have to be directly over the target or near it when you drop. If the enemy has AA units, you can guarantee these things aren't going to come back. So that's what a guided missile is good. You can launch it and then you can just get the hell out of there. And you'll probably, by the time you're pulling up, you might be over the target. You might have pulled up before the target, but at least you're getting away. You ha it isn't just a case of you've just arrived and the AA is now already halfway targeted you. And it's already, you know, it's pretty much getting ready to launch its first batch of missiles. If you're already getting out the moment they spot you you're probably a lot safer, so that's a thing. You're, there's a lot more risk, in, inherent risk, with dropping bombs, but obviously there's a lot that can go wrong on missiles, so, you know, it's good to have a few different options. Um, tanks, I think the tanks are good. Maybe a cutback in... Oh, there's nothing I would... At this point, you could either lose quite a few units everywhere else, or you could get a couple of extra jets, so it's up to you. Um, if you were, you might be losing some of your AA units. I'm just looking at how accurate these things are. Um, oh no, I, I would have to basically get rid of quite a lot. But yeah, I didn't explain tanks. Um, yeah, I've given you the second best tank. The first best will go through everything, and you might want to get them, but you only get two, I will just say. Um, I mean, the, these things will destroy everything, but there is only two of them, so that's an important thing to take into account. Two tanks are probably not going to end the war. Um, eight tanks, on the other hand, probably will. Um... But yes, these are, these are the just big heavy tanks, basically. Um, that's all you really need to know about them. There are other tanks, there's lighter tanks. Um, this is actually a variant of the German Leopard. It's a very weird variant. But if you notice, it's got a stabilizer. And it's quite cheap. Um, and the good thing about having a stabilizer on is that it means it can move. It, it doesn't matter its armor is crap, because if this thing can be, if this thing, you just keep it moving, even off-road or even on a road, if it's on-road it's going to be going fucking fast and they probably won't be able to catch it, but if it's going fast and firing that's almost like having another form of armour, you know, because you're dodging the shots so it's actually more of a sustainable form of armour it's why when, obviously it's not going to do much against this, which has as good a stabiliser, but now the armour is amazing 
So that's that's always a thing to take into account. The stabilizer might be really good, and so you you don't have to stop it if if you do stop this thing in the middle of the battle you are going to lose it it's not going to take that hit uh, it might take one hit but it's not going to take many hits so that's a thing there's uh, other options you've got i mean this would be a good sort of you need you know like a multiple i mean it's cheap it's cheap you get a lot of them and stuff but i've actually given you a, a weaker abrams this is like the first m1 abrams so looks exactly the same but its stats are a little bit less off the wall. Um, it stabilizes only half as accurate. It's actually a very good tank, I will say that. Um, kind of them at their peak, really. Anyway, um, that's it, really. That is your deck. And now I was saying, oh, actually, no shit. Naval stuff. Yeah. Um, in this, there is also naval battles. Um, good thing about naval battles is is that you know like there's boats on um but there's also amphibious landings and there's all of that stuff um typically it's a good idea unless you're doing marines um to basically you, you know it's just use this stuff to support your operations on land so maybe get like a command ship i wouldn't recommend a congo because um you will need to you will need to be able to survive without it um, it's, you know, it's a big sort of, um, what is it actually, it's a destroyer, but th this is the thing, you, it's not anti-air, this is like a bit, this is, for this era, it might look a bit weak, but it's actually for, you know, like, it's actually for defending against anti-air, well, it's for, um, sorry, no, it's for actually slugging out of other ships, it has a lot of anti-ship missiles, it has some anti-air, but it doesn't have stuff for stopping missiles, which in a naval battle is very crucial, because um, naval battles have changed a lot, now it's all about launching a giant fuck-off missile at someone and shoving it up their arse and giving them a bloody bottom, um, as opposed to just beating them around the face with a bunch of shells. Um, where's the American command ship? I know it's around, oh there it is, the Oliver Hazard Perry, that's what I'm going to give you. This is a good sort of it's, it's guns a bit weak, so if it actually comes out to shelling out with the enemy, that gun is going to prove a bit ina inefficient. But it's got all the missiles, so you can missile people to death. And also, um, it has defences against enemy jet fighter missiles. You can see it on the back. It doesn't sh annoyingly, the table doesn't show you all the defences, so it's a bit of a test and hope you survive. But you can see it's got a Vulcan gun on it for stopping those missiles I was talking about. So that's a good sort of just, you've got a ship for fighting. Also technically it should be able to launch helicopters, but it can't. Um, you, get, you can also get land units. This is a good place to bolster up your land units and shove more on the deck that you didn't have already. Um, for this reason, I'm just looking at what I could bring you. I could bring you tanks that you, oh, actually, yeah. Uh, that's a point. You could have, if you ever get to a, a a point on the the land where you can actually bring on more, um, uh, you know, like ships or more units from the sea, this is a good thing to do. You can bring on. I mean, I could give you things like monitor boats, which artillery on a tiny little river going vessel. So that's a point. You can get boats which will be good in open sea. Other things like this, which are good for going down that tiny little river. Um, I think, I'm just trying to find it, yeah, you also get things like this, this is a floating tank destroyer with speedboat stuff, so, you know, whoosh. Um, how much do you get of these? Okay, let's get you some more marines, because, you know, more marines the better. Um, LAVs, yeah, you could have some LAVs, oh, recon LAVs, even better. Um, these will come on on their own transports, they'll actually come in and landing craft. So that's always a good thing. Um, yeah, so landing craft, they do their stuff. You can bring on more jet fighters. Um, that might actually be a good idea for you. Um, not going to lie, but these ones are for knocking out ships. Maybe not, actually. I'm just trying to find it. There is somewhere on it. This is what I wanted an LCU. It's a supply ship. Not as much as the... Um, how raises message me again. Okay, right. But yes, um, these things... Where's it gone, actually? I've lost it on the table. But yeah. Um, 
it, it, it just has supplies on it. It's extra supplies. They're always good. You get four of them. They're decent. Um, and then the last thing, I think, I'll make it anti-air because one can never have enough anti-aircraft, honestly. Um, I honestly mean that you will seriously get hit by a lot. But I could also be on some special force. But no, I think wherever they are, there was... Oh, there you go. Yes. You can also load units into landing craft that have already dropped off their units. So, you know, say if you wanted to bring something in in a naval landing, you might not have it on here, but one of those units will drop off um, a landing, you know, drop off units in a landing craft, and that means you can just, you know, can tell something else to board the landing craft and then use that in the naval invasion instead. Or as well, you could just have it as that second wave that comes, like, five minutes later. Um, but yes, that's what I've given you. You've actually got a reasonable landing force there. Humvees with Stinger missiles, you've got some LAVs for fighting out, and some US Marines, though probably would want some tanks if you ever did a prolonged landing. Um, yeah, so yeah, there you go, you've got your ship. Now the great thing about this is, is that, oh you've got, oh no I can't do anything with that. Anyway, um, the great thing about this is, is now I've, you have, any changes in your deck? Do you want to save them? Yes, of course I want to change them. Okay, so now I've got to find that deck um, around here. But yeah, now I've saved that deck and that's in my list of decks. I can now do something once I find that new deck. This probably is it. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's it. Okay, right, quit. Oh shit. Now it's gone again. Right. I'm going to rename it real quick to Burnout's Deck, or Burnout's Deck, because, you know, something's the same. Burnout's Deck, and I'm going to call it Deck, just because I want to get it done. Right, confirm, Burnout's Deck, where have you gone? There it is. And now, if I want to give it to you, I simply copy it. Oh no, shit, never mind. Oh. Um, never mind, ignore that, I can delete that deck, I've got two of them, but yes, I can export, and then I can copy it, and I've got the link of it now, and I can control C, and then, basically, I'm going to send it to you now on Steam, and when you get this, I can literally just be, you can be like, oh, I'm Hellraiser, I suck dick, oh, what's this, I got mail, Ugh. Right, hang on a minute, import, paste deck here, I can then paste that code, and then I can put I'm gay in the title, and then, and then I import it, and then if I look around somewhere, there should be, yeah, there's a file saying I'm gay, now I've got a, now I've got myself a, um, a nice new deck to use, oh, I wonder what's in it, oh, oh shit, it's got Abrams tanks, oh, it's an American deck, oh, there we go, you know, there we go, that's my thing, you can fuck off now. Um, nah, okay, uh, Hellraiser uh, added a new team speak, so we'll go on to that, but yes. Um, that's a thing now. Alright guys, I, I, thanks, I thanks for watching this tutorial that Goodbye. my friend, my friend, uh, this is uh, my friend, um, showed me, he, and you know, and I, I'm literally just saying this right after he showed me that. So maybe, just maybe, if you want to hear a British man tell you how to play war game Red Dragon, well, there you guys go. Well, uh, have fun. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Uh, make America great again.